Let's go. Hello, what's up, peeps? This is a Geek Artist, and on today's video, I'll be talking about five most common digital art mistakes every beginner artist makes and how to avoid them. So, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click on that bell icon so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to watch this video till the end. Mistake number one not using clipping masks. I've seen so many beginner artists painting everything on the same layer lights, shadows, textures, all on the same layer and later on finding it difficult to go back and make changes. And the reason they do it is because it's really easy to use selection, whether it's magic selection to a control selection, and paint everything at a go. When you use magic selection, there's always this ugly white line at the edge. I had made a whole video on this long back. The most effective solution to this is using clipping masks. That way you don't have to worry about making selections every time or having your paint bleed outside of the flat base layer. So once you have a flat base layer, create a new layer, right click and select clipping mask. Now everything you paint on this layer will stay bound within the flat base it's clipped on. You can now create multiple clipped layers to paint lights, shadows and textures all separately. Mistake number two, drawing on the same layer. And trust me when I say this guys, I often make this mistake even now. And it's really heartbreaking and frustrating because sometimes you lose a lot of progress just because you've been painting on the wrong layer by mistake all this time. So the best way to make sure that this does not happen is by locking every other layer except for the layer that you're working on presently. That way there's no chance of making that mistake. Mistake number three, not using references. Always remember, using references for your painting does not mean cheating. Every seasoned artist uses them. And it's highly recommended for better results and personal growth. It's a great idea to refer to images whether they are poses, anatomy, hand gestures, facial expressions, drapery, designs, color palette, or lighting. Once you have an idea of what you want to paint, definitely make a habit of referring to as many images as you can to expand your mental library or inspiration or let's call it image vocabulary. You'll find yourself wasting a lot less time getting stuck at places and overall you'll be more confident about creating a polished output. Mistake number 4. Not using adjustment layers. When you apply effects like levels, curves, hue, saturation and others, to a layer, the change is permanent and you can't go back unless you have a duplicate layer for backup. But it's an inconvenient way because it increases the number of layers and makes the file heavier. So use adjustment layers instead. That way, not only can you go back, turn off the effects, you can also make adjustments and changes to these effects anytime you want. It's a win win. Just go to layers and create new adjustment layer and select whichever effect you want to choose accordingly. Mistake number 5 Getting caught up with the details instead of focusing on the basics. Stop over focusing on details. Always remember, details are not what makes your art stand out or catch the attention. Pay more attention to basics like design, composition, colors and lights because these are what determine if your painting will look beautiful at a quick glance. A great way to practice this is by not zooming in too much. Once you zoom in, you tend to add details, so try painting with a full canvas in view and try not to obsess over brushes because at the end of the day, if your basics are solid, you can turn any brush into a weapon. They really don't matter all that much. And finally, a bonus point, mistake number 6, not using a drawing tablet. I know a lot of people may not be able to afford one, but if you want to get serious about digital art, then you will need one sooner or later. A mouse won't let you unleash the full potential of the digital art medium because of many limitations like lack of pen pressure and natural stroke flow. There are a lot of beginner level tablets in the market that are relatively a lot cheaper, 
making them a worthwhile investment if you're serious about digital art. So that's it for this video, hope you found this useful and if you did, make sure to like, share, subscribe and click on the bell icon to stay updated about my upcoming videos and don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions or video suggestions. Your support and feedback is greatly appreciated. So until next time, peace.